That's why like I love YouTube because I can control it myself. Like I can literally do it 100% myself. I do have an editor that's full-time now and I have a person that works on brand deals, but that's all like part-time work. That's not like they're full-time employees and we're like, you know, I'm dictating their schedules. I'm not being a manager to them. They're, yeah. you know, like other companies essentially. And so anyways, with all of that, like even some friends of mine got approached, one from Discovery, one from Netflix to do shows and uh, they both turned them down. Because yeah. they were like, this is stupid. Like, why the hell would I? Like, sure, you're going to pay me a hundred grand for, you know, three months, which is good. But in the same time, I, I have, I'm just talent at this point. I'm just on screen. You guys figure the rest of this shit out. And that's not fun. For me, what's fun is the whole craft of it, you know, from yeah. the expensive gear to how to edit to how to find B roll, do transitions, animations sound yeah. of sound design like that to me is the craft of it and i love it so youtube is a special thing but it's very easy to get like ahead of your skis yeah and i, um, I think if you're inexperienced that's really easy like if you if you've gone around been the rodeo twice or whatever they say right uh, <laughs> uh then you're a little bit aware of that like one of the, one of the things that may, this might be interesting because you're about the whole economics thing like the thing that I hated when I had a bunch of employees is that I didn't know if I was making money. It was too complex. <laughs> like there was too many sources coming, too many sources going, you yeah. know, and I'm like, are we, are we making money? And I used to worry. And then at one point I'm like, who cares? Who knows? Like <laughs> I, I don't have enough time to figure it out. Like literally this business was growing so fast, right? This time around, I'm doing it completely different. I'm like every mm -hmm. month I go and bounce and I'm like, am I actually making money? And I'm like, Whoa, um, yeah. So let me ask you something. Maybe you know, because you know maybe about business more than me, uh, probably. So, if if a business is profitable, like what I know, different uh, our industries have different settings, right? Or different uh, they operate differently, right? But like, if you have a business that makes fifty percent profit, so if that means like out of every dollar that you sell you 50 cents is profit is that mm -hmm. like is that that's normal great. or is that yeah. like good or well is that it, it like, varies is that? so the, the at the high level probably the distinction if you were to ask a real economist you'd probably have to look at the nature of the business right because you have essentially um goods and services so okay. goods would be anything that is a physical it's product physical. yeah right Anything that's not physical would be a service. Even like YouTube videos would be considered service. a service because it's not a physical thing. Um, yeah. So so it depends on on that's probably the first distinction because on the good side, generally speaking, your profit margins are going to be a lot lower. Oh um, really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Be, I'm because actually operating if you, backwards. Then. <laughs> well, okay, but yeah. but think about it like this. So I used to work at Facebook, and at Facebook, I remember. I remember walking around one day being like, this shit is not sustainable. Like, like there are seven restaurants on campus that are all fucking incredible. Like some of the best food in the Bay area. And it's all free for everybody on campus all day long. And I'm just going, no shit. Like no way. Like, how can you afford this? There's 5,000 of us here. You're feeding us. You're giving us all this crazy stuff. And then I looked at the balance sheet because uh, I was doing the, the, the dashboard for the CFO and and I looked at it, and I looked at the revenue uh, per employee, and it was something like forty million dollars a year per employee is how much Facebook was making. Whoa! You know, and this was the okay. early days, and Good. so I'm looking at it going, now y'all y'all motherfuckers need to step this up. Like this looks <laughs> like shit, you know. But if you think about Where's a company, my Tesla? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, if you think about a company like that, like they're a service based company and you know, we were at the time like 5,000 people with like 20 billion in revenue. So it's insane. The kind of return. Now there are other costs than labor, of course, especially for them, like basically computers, like servers running the site, but all of that, like it's, it's their profit margins are just through the roof. That's why companies like Google, uh, or, you know, uh, uh, YouTube, all these, they make huge profit margins. Well, what do you um, think it is out of every dollar that they sell? Like what's, what is the percentage do you think if, yeah, if you I, had to guess? Well, 
if you look, and someone probably knows this because these companies are public, you can go look it up. But uh, if you were to look at how these companies are uh, valued, that that's a good indicator. So let's say in in the numbers that come to mind, and you know, from when the last time I looked at this, where a tech company is usually like thirty to forty times their their market cap, how much their stock is valued at, is thirty to forty times what their earnings are. So if you make a billion dollars in revenue, not talking profit, but revenue, so you could be barely making a profit on that, your your market cap, your stock is gonna be around 30 to 40 times that. That's the value of your business. And if you were to look at on the other side, like a Procter and Gamble or you know Caterpillar, somebody that makes hard goods, like things like that, it's gonna be like like five times or something. Uh. Okay. So it's going to be way, 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 way lower. That's why Tesla actually has a really weird, like, does it make sense to traditional stock traders when they look at Tesla? Because they look at it and go, you're a car company. You're a car company. And, but, but you're trading. A computer company. <laughs> yeah. It's a software company, though. It's like a weird, they don't know where to fit. They're everything. I think it's a data company, honestly. I think the biggest thing in Tesla's possible future well, there's two things, but one is self-driving cars. And the thing you need for self-driving cars, besides a, a car with the tech, which they obviously already have, is the data to teach the machine learning algorithms and architectures how to drive the car. So they, with now over a million cars out there uh, that all have cameras and are collecting data 24-7, they're, they're just light years ahead of anyone else in this space. So I would look at it, I would look at Tesla if I were an investor in that light. Like, holy shit, they are so far ahead in this one space. And yeah. if they can really nail self-driving cars, you're going to, I mean, it's just they're going to become a, a multi-trillion dollar company. It's yeah. just, it, they're just going to blow past everyone out there. Um, will and so that it? is why their that's... stocks should be valued so super high. Do you think that will trump uh, Starlink? Because that's another huge thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, so me and my friends were talking about this recently um, on our podcast, Our Ludicrous Future. And Tim on there is the, is the SpaceX guy. He's the everyday astronaut. So he's like the man at this stuff. And he, he and we, we were chatting about it. Um, I, I think Starlink's going to be huge, but it might not be as huge as it as people think. And it's because like where you live now in um let me let me just tell everyone your address real quick no but <laughs> but like where where we both live in southern california yeah. uh in plenty you know of land networks it, it's broadband internet is easy and it's uh, relatively inexpensive i don't have high speed internet at, at home what i mean i, Def I have define that I, tell me more i have i think the fastest i can go it's like 10 up what? and 20 down. That's it. It's it's hardwired. It's like copper. You, I don't you need have to move. Optical. First off, you need I'm to move. I'm in Rancho Cucamonga. And so I'm only like That's less not... than half a mile from here. And this is yeah. a commercial space. I have... We have 100 down, 100 up, or 500 down, 500 up here. It's like, and that's still dog slow. Uh, it is. Super fast for, for, for compared us. Compared to what you were used to. Compared to yeah. what I've been... been so, yeah. so, yeah. So, okay. So, if it's your house, you're getting 10, 10 up, 20 down and Starlink comes in and maybe it's a little bit more money, maybe there's a setup fee, but you're gonna get a hundred times better performance, With you would probably dish, go right? for it. Yeah, little, I, I, I guess. Would, I would sign that contract tomorrow, yeah. Yeah. So the question is though, like so uh, Tim, it, my buddy, Everyday Astronaut, we were talking about it because he lives in Cedar Falls, Iowa, and you may think this is like BFE, like there's nothing around but cornfields, and that's slightly true. But he has 10 gig internet at his house. <laughs> okay, okay. Like, I, I do not understand this, but literally his shit is like, like we did a speed test one time. Because, you know, after we do our podcast remotely like this, and we have to upload our audio, and it's like four gigs. It's just like 10 seconds. It's just like, bink, it's there. And I'm like, how wow. the fuck does this happen? And so... <laughs> So He's for like, him, God. so so like for him, it does not make sense at all, right? Like, why yeah. the hell would I, like, decrease my speed by ten, and probably pay more money? So yeah, but I think he's not. He, he's the exception. I don't think he's the rule, right? Well, that, that's my that's my question. So so 
the data we would need to know how big Starlink is going to be, like if I were an investor thinking, what should we price the stock at? I would want to know the, the market uh, potential because people like Tim and even, even someone like me where I have, you know, 900 down and 40 up, like unless it comes in cheaper, I probably won't do it uh, until it's more proven out. So yeah. I think like the market may not be as big as you think. Well, you know? I think their initial market is not going to be in the U.S., right? It's going to have to be abroad, some other countries, to world countries, you know. Well, but of course, it, I, the lower latitudes is going to take longer because they're starting it, from the north, so it doesn't make sense. All that's what I'm saying. Yeah, higher latitudes are are developed countries. They're Norway. They're right. They're yeah. all like England. Yep. Russia, like they don't need. Well, I don't know. Maybe Russia, China, maybe rural China needs. Yeah, no, th there, there's definitely a market there, and I think the bigger, p the bigger impact Starlink might have, is breaking apart the, the stranglehold that the ISPs have here, because then they'll truly be forced to compete. 